can I, are you all here? Okay, can I ask you to introduce yourselves? And then I'll open it straight up. Uh, thanks, Iris. We'll uh, open it up straight to the, uh, to the floor. Just say who you are and then pass on. Simon Lloyd from St Andrews Healthcare. Yeah. <laughs> now, better BAs. All get that now. <laughs> Marie Lavall from Skills for Care. Yeah, you didn't get a hair, yeah. Uh, Joy Duxbury um, from the University of Central Lancashire, and I chair the group. Iris Benson, uh, service user carer rep, Mayor's Care NHS Trust. I'm Paul Greenwood from Aqua. I'm Colin Dale and I'm Vice Chair of the uh, Network. I'm Jim Ridley, I'm from Edgehill University and Bill. Jim, thanks. Hi, I'm Jonathan Lynch, I'm from uh, Sussex Partnership Trust and I'm a consultant nurse in mental health. And I'm Chris Sterling, I'm from CPI and also the Vice Chair of the group. Great. I'm wondering if you could talk more about the West Midlands project that was muted about on the first day. Okay. And what, what's a remit and what will it look like? Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you've raised that, Sue, because uh, it was on my radar to, to mention that and I'd forgotten. Um, so Norman Lamb mentioned in his keynote yesterday that we're, we're working together to put in a very large grant application. Um, with people in the Midlands. And this has come from two chief execs from two trusts in the Midlands who are really keen to minimize restrictive practices. And um, so Norman arranged a meeting that I went to on behalf of the Restraint Reduction Network. And um, they're, they're really keen to, to get things moving. Now, the, the money that I'm going to apply for will be very ambitious. The, there's something called the, the National Institute for Health Research. Uh, and there's something called a program grant and basically you can apply for up to five years funding and you can apply for up to half a million, uh, half a million, um, five million pounds. And our, our idea is we want to, to learn from the work we've been doing on Restrain Yourself from No Force First and various other strategies that are being uh, encouraged uh, around the country and build up a program of work to then get to the point where we can combine the best of those things and, and roll them out. Uh, and test them in a what they call a cluster randomised control trial, which would be around the, the country, subsequent to getting the money, obviously. And so it's it's a great opportunity for people, if they want to get involved, to email me and let me know, um, because it will be an ambitious project and we will need a lot of sites. Uh, I already have had conversations with some of the trusts in the northwest because we've got good relations there, and particularly Mersey Care are very keen. Um, but uh, as I say, we will, we will need multiple sites to do this. Uh, and so, yeah, and I, I, I'm not just talking mental health trust. So, you know, we're across organisations, if people are interested in, in um, being a site or getting involved, I, I think my email is, is somewhere. Um, it's probably on the Restraint Reduction Network, I'm not sure, but I, I'm trying to think how I can get my email to people. What's the best way? Or you can just search, yeah, put it on the website, or you could just search search for me and jduxbury at uclan.ac.uk will come up. Um, but I'd be really, yeah, I'd be really keen to hear from people to get involved. Yeah. So thanks for that, Sue. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Paul Gove, Shetland, uh, Shetland Islands Council. I was just wondering, we made reference over the past couple of days to the RCN. I was wondering if the Restraint Reduction Network are doing any work with... Uh, trade unionists okay. and trade unions mo movements to support staff rather than the trade unionists coming I'm a trade I am a, yeah, <laughs> a rep um, coming in and saying you as an employee have to do this did it I'm wondering if there's any plans to do any work with trade unionists as well I love the question who's going to pick this up da -da. I don't want to do all the talking Chris <laughs> <laughs> well, um, Christian go for it where, where we sit at the moment Ian Hewlett from the RCN. <clears throat> Ian Hewlett from the RCN is on the steering group. So uh, we have kind of tried to make sure there's representatives from all elements of services and all perspectives in the work that we do. And I guess as a as a as a network and as a steering group, we we trying to be as inclusive as we can and get as many broad perspectives as 
outlined in the six core strategies, there's not one particular thing you can do. So getting getting people who can contribute and to uh, give a, a rounded perspective is something that, as, as a, a network, we're, we're always interested in and will be a high priority agenda item for us, uh, you know, as the network progresses. I'm just wondering if, if there'd been any contact with Unison, Unite and the other trade union bodies. Not just the RCN so far, but yeah. uh, we have been discussing how we uh, make sure we've got a broader representation um, in the network and also uh, at the steering group. Um, I guess the challenge for us as a steering group is you need broad representation to cover all aspects, whether it's organisations and staff, whether it's service user perspectives and relatives. But the other challenge is for the steering group to be effective, it, it can't be this size um, because the, it'd be difficult to, to get any action agreed. So it, it's it's I guess well, that's where we are at the moment, and we'll continue to to try and build that uh, representation. I think it's a good point, though. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> I mean I don't know uh, Unite well, but in terms of Unison, um, then Paul Bell, who's the chief um, uh, in, uh, policy officer. Unison is very well, I don't know if you know Paul, but very well worth speaking to. And I think he's, be, he's very interested in this whole area of care and so on and so forth. So Paul's a good, a good egg to, 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 uh, to engage with. Okay, thanks for that, Paul. Yes, sir. Uh, I suppose it was about increasing awareness of the network and the direction okay. the network's going in. So we were, we were at sort of Broadmoor on Monday and amongst the sort of violence reduction centre there and the people that we were training within the hospital there, there wasn't an awareness of the restraint reduction network so it was I suppose one about maintaining that increasing awareness but in terms of maybe the next 12 months how you can increase that awareness and what the plans are for the <coughs> network. What was your name? Nick Horn, uh, Sydney Healthcare. Thanks. Who is going to do this well? Let the promotion of the network generally and specifically the network generally and specifically either in relation to Broadmoor or wherever? Um, I guess, yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to think really um, what I want to say. <laughs> Do you think it's fair to talk about the conversation we had? It sounds like cloak and daggers now, doesn't it? Oh, have you, you've had a conversation? <laughs> yeah. Right, uh, come on, let's hear it. Um, no, okay, so as, as well you know, and I think we've communicated this all along, <laughs> that, that CPI have been sort of hosting us mm. for um, two years now, and that was always a... a a temporary arrangement one because they had some money to give us and support us doing that but there's always been a, a potential conflict of interest because they are a commercial organization um, and so they, they've done a sterling job I think of, of supporting us and helping us uh, and maintaining the conference which has, has never um, was never aimed to be um, what's the word to produce money what's that word profit. yeah profit yeah, yeah. Um, it's a dirty word, I can Yeah, imagine. yeah. <laughs> so it was never intended for that. Um, and and I, I mean, just on that, I mean, I, I just love coming to this conference. Yeah. Uh, the, the last three, I just think it gets better and better. Um, and I, I feel really passionate about it. But we, we were having conversations with the, uh, there is a network called the Directors of um, Nursing for Learning Disabilities and Mental Health. We had had conversations about, with them about whether they might be interested. But again, that restricts things a little bit because we, we want to broaden out and we've, we've had a lot of feedback on that, that people really want to be involved in the network, not just from mental health, not just from learning disabilities. Um, so on that, we, we have been having, I don't know if Ben's still here actually, but we have been having some tentative discussions with, um, with BUILD. Now, my, Ben Higgins is the new chief exec at BUILD. Um, and I, I hadn't realised, but they have dropped the strap line, British Institute of Learning Disabilities. Um, so that they're just calling themselves BUILD, but without that sort of, I think, increase in association that it's just for learning disabilities. And I think his ethos is he really wants to grow and develop the organisation um, so that they can... Um, I'm getting preoccupied by this camera in my face. <laughs> it's getting closer and closer. Do you want the good side? <laughs> yeah. Um, <coughs> So we've had conversations with Ben, um, and he is really keen to um, embrace this network, and, and I, I think that would be a really good match for us. Um, and so it, it's going to be watch this space, and it, it also means that we can widen out possibilities of what we can do. 
um, put more resources. Uh, there's a lot of resources we're going to be putting on the website soon because projects are, are happening, are coming to an end, and the materials are going to be there, which is great. The, the long-awaited um, uh, benchmarking tool that we've been working on tirelessly uh, will be ready to go onto the website soon for organizations who are part of this network to download for free to use. Uh, and all of these things fit with Bill's sort of philosophy. And, and again, they want to, you know, they want it to be for health and social care and educational settings and all of those things that we can strive for. So I think it's quite an exciting time for the network. And the conference will then, because um, they have a, their own conference organizers, obviously. Uh, so the conference will carry on and we'll probably get a lot bigger and we'll have various streams of activity, you know, that, that might be uh, of interest to people. So, yeah, um, I can't even remember what the question was now. It's about promoting and profiling yeah, the network. Yeah, so, I mean, I think that, that will, yeah, that yeah. will be a huge agenda item and, and clearly will shift a little Good. because of that. Do any other student group members want to comment on promoting? Okay, Nick, had, had you had any ideas about... I'll come... I'm going to just, just ask you a question. Any ideas that you had in terms of promoting the network? I, I think as an event, I think Joey's absolutely right. This is getting bigger and bigger. And uh, I, I think it's the, how we go maybe into different areas and just be, do more focused work in those areas. So we're hitting wider groups of people. So, uh, it's, uh, yeah, it just needs some thought. But right. she, she answered the question very well, actually, so thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, I thought it was all right. <laughs> Irish. I told you I wasn't going to shut up, didn't I? Um, I think we, we can't afford to miss anybody out. Yeah. And I'm talking about unions and all of that. They have to want to get engaged with us and, and help us challenge restraint um, in a positive way and be part of that. Um, and, I, and I think today and yesterday, I mean, I've learned so much again, seen lots of new faces, which is great. Um, and the, um, the workshops have been really good and I just hope that there's more service users and carers and families that want to come and join us to say how they feel because it's really important we touch those hearts and minds and, and, you know, and co-production, again, I'm going to say it again, we, we cannot just bandy that word around and say we're co-producing and like, like you said, you know, You've got one on the end of the table, but what, are, what is that person doing? Yeah. And they've got every right to say how they feel, what it feels like. And I'm proud to do this. I've got no education. I've got none of those ologies or bits of paper, but I am going to use my voice now when it's been silenced for so long since I was a child. All the children's services here that we've seen, it's amazing to see them. And I'm resonating with so much that they're saying. And if we can get to children before they get into the system and then a further damage, not through, I'm not gonna blame staff, I don't believe in blaming people, but if we can stop them getting to there and we work with them, you know, what you're doing about Ashworth is, you know, people say to me, why'd you go in there with those maniacs? They're not maniacs. And I know the good work that they do in, in there with younger people who, get missed in the system, then go to prison, then can't be managed in, what does manage mean? Mm. You know, does that mean we manage them to shut up? No. So, the, and then they come in with us and we, and I see the work they do in there and lots of other places. I'm not just, you know, I'm, I'm passionate about everywhere. And if we got to children before that happened, <coughs> and I've seen children end up in there, they're totally unmanageable because of whatever reasons, no bad children there's something wrong and we and they work with them and you know what they go home how lovely is that you know and there's not just one person in there thank you very glad we've got a lot of people in there that aren't well and we're there to care for them the operative word is care and if we do that together i've seen so many new faces today how beautiful is that and i've really enjoyed and believe me if i didn't enjoy what i was doing i would say because i can now don't get silenced I, anymore that's the difference so thank you for the, for the difference. Oh, many thanks indeed I, 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 I need to put her in the red zone. <laughs> yeah, ju just, just one thing to add for the, um, the, about the network, uh, following on from Nick's point. Um, we have got, I think I asked yesterday at the steering group, we've got something like 
uh, was it about 400 organisations who signed up to pledge their support? Yeah. And, uh, and I can't recall how many individuals, but it was a lot. And we've got, in, you know, the, the speak joy. <laughs> Um, we've got international buy-in. You know, these are international organisations as well, so that the spread it is happening. Yeah. Good stuff. Uh, you want to come in? Sorry, I just want to add to that. I've um, not forgotten you, sir. Sorry, and it goes in. Sorry, I just want to add something, and it actually goes with what, one of the things we were talking about yesterday, is that um, you guys have made an investment to come, whether it be your time or your company's investment, whatever. Um, but the pledges that you make aren't just for your organisation. You as practitioners, carers, service users, nurses, doctors, whatever you are, have made a personal pledge to make a difference. And I think if, if we're going to really build this network, then we need to continue to make that very personal, uh, not sacrifice, that very personal judgment about saying, do you know what, I've took something away from here mm -hmm. today. And I'm going to make sure that somebody who doesn't know about the RRN knows tomorrow. And I think that's another way of promoting this network. You can hang on to that. Yeah. No, I'm not talking about you. <laughs> yes. Thank you very much indeed for that. Yes, sir. I'd just like to say uh, your uh, name. Uh, my name's Phil Clayton. I'm a psychotherapist. Phil. Phil Clayton, yeah. I'd just like to say, I think Iris kind of must have read my mind because I was thinking. One of the things that I've, I'm going to take away from this conference is the, um, are the, are the user contributions. Yes. Okay. And you and I were in the last workshop, yeah. and I was um, bowled over by that yeah. gentleman's uh, presentation, as I was with Iris's presentation yeah. and Sam's. Yeah. Um, and I was just thinking that uh, it's been absolutely brilliant, and I've loved talking to everybody here. But I was just thinking. Yes, there's all policy. There's policy. There's poly dis policy descriptions. There's phrases. There's paragraphs. There's dates. There's references. But right at the heart of everything is the user and the stories that those users tell, the narratives, the the, descript the descriptions of those lives that have been lived um, prior to them coming to services, yeah. and the stories behind those narratives and giving people the opportunity to work with therapists, to form with psychologists, uh, to formulate, to understand, to understand why somebody gets into a pickle and ends up having a fight with somebody, or a standoff, or a, I understand why you might be like this, why you might be feeling like this. You told me last Thursday how, why you feel like this. Why you dissociate? Why you flip into a self state? Why you suddenly disappear yeah. into this um, uh, Donald Duck scenario? That's at the key of everything, I think. And there may be—I don't know who's on the, I don't know who this, what disciplines there are. <coughs> uh, you know, I, I've spoken to a lot of nurses and lots of psychologists, and I just wonder what. I, ju I just hope that the formulation, the psychological or the human formulation, the human understanding is at the heart of absolutely everything because out of that comes restraint, yeah. right. comes, dis comes difficulty, comes distress. Okay. And I was just wondering what the panel think about their, their multidisciplinary mix. Of okay. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. So let's put that out for tender. Anyone want to, to pick that, that up in terms of the centrality? Of, of users well, are you and so on. to the network or to the student oh, group? To, to, to the whole to the thing, really. Yeah, to the network, yeah. Yeah. What yeah. your perspectives might be. I right. guess it was a comment on the question. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we've certainly got, um, I mean, we have two service users who sit on the steering group with us. Fiona's not here at the moment. Um, so there's Fiona Edgar and, and there's Iris. Um, and, it, you know, there's, there's always arguments that, that things like that can be to tokenistic. Um, I mean, that's certainly never been our intention, and I don't think that's the case in this instance. But, I mean, look, there are to there are some things that are totally not here. This is why this is so yeah. important. Yeah. 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 This is but not <coughs> tokenistic, what you're seeing now. But I, I think, think Sam agree, it's not, yeah. it doesn't feel tokenistic, and we know we, when we have been used like that. I didn't, I didn't use that word. I no, we know no, that. no, I did, yeah. 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 No. yeah. But uh, mm. um, I, I guess from a broader perspective, and, and I think you probably get the flavour that Certainly the six core strategies as an organisational approach is something that we really subscribe to. 
and, and one of the key strategies is service user involvement and, and I think we, we all subscribe to that you know wholeheartedly um, and, and I, I guess as we move forward yes and it goes back to the unison question and unite it, it's about engaging with the right organizations and, and care and service user groups will be will be part of that agenda okay um, yes sir your name first? Oh, sorry, it's An Andrew Hyder, Andrew. Uh, Street Healthcare and Division of Clinical Psychology. Thanks, uh, Andrew. Uh, BPS. Um, so, um, it was just uh, an observation, really, that I think that this network and the, this kind of grouping of people represents, um, you know, this pretty significant seismic change in the mental health system and the, the kind of long job of re-engineering the whole mental health system to make it more person-centred. And there's a lot of um, different networks and processes connected to that overall sort of mission at the moment. There's things like enabling environments. Uh, there's things that have been done in the criminal justice system. And I guess the question I've got is that, you know, essentially we're all talking about improving the relational quality of our services with a view to reducing restraint. So how... I'd be interested in people's views on how all that can be brought together because obviously there's the organisational perspective that we're talking about here and with a particular focus on restraint but there's all these other kind of groups of people who all kind of are thinking well, actually things are not right we've got to change this how, sh how should that all be brought together? Okay, it's a challenging and I'm not uh, question. Thinking about, I'm not thinking about disciplines here because no, no. I'm not really interested oh, in disciplines yeah. particularly. No, I've got it. About. Yeah. Andrew, I've got it. Does anyone want to comment? Um, or are we going to look to Joy again? Or are we going to... Anyone going to respond to that? I think it's really important that we recognise that it's not just us. It's absolutely everyone. And but we can't force you to come and do this. We, we want to hear from you. We want your opinion. We, it's important to listen to opinions. There's loads and loads of great work out there being done. We need to praise that. We don't praise our staff enough. You know, I get slated off service users when they say, what you, you know, what the hell are you praising staff for? They're awful. But people always say about, the, they remember the bad. They don't remember the good. But we have to engage with each other and celebrate all the good work because it's all just therapy. I've had lots of different therapy and it really helped. Social work input, it was a social worker that got me out after five years, but we have to recognise that and talk about it and celebrate everything everyone does, and we can only do that if we work together. Yeah. Okay, thanks for that, Iris. Joy? Yeah. <coughs> okay. I was thinking on the... For me, mental health's always struggled. It's always like the by-the-way um, sort of area of healthcare. And we're, we're in a world now of sustainable transformation plans and um, vanguards, integration, whole systems, flow works, a big area. But I think there's opportunities now to get into those conversations with um, education, sports, and a whole raft of areas of public life that we've not really had conversations with. So I do think there's opportunities there and something maybe the network could get into in terms of diversifying the membership. So bringing more in, in from education and from acute health as well. I'm just curious as to how many people from acute health services are in the room. Probably no, no, nobody. <laughs> the physical health side, primary care and community care. So, but I think we need to, uh, to start to open those conversations up, um, particularly around the STPs. Okay, thanks. Then I'll take one more question, and then Sam. Yeah, right. um, well, first of all, back to um, what you were saying. It's really hard for service users and carers to stand sit yes. in a wheelchair, etc., um, and tell their stories. And I think part of the challenge is. How do we almost put a, um, a, an arm of friendship out to those service users or carers to support those people to do that? Because it is very hard. Mm -hmm. And then back to sec what you were just saying about um, there's other areas where um, the, the network could go into. I do a lot, I'm, I'm, as I said, I'm a primary school teacher by background, and I do a lot of work now with secondary schools mm -hmm and um, FE colleges, usually around self-harm, mm. but I hear lots and lots about how the teachers yeah. react 
or the lecturers who were, you know, um, react to the self-harm. Um, I try and encourage them to react in maybe <laughs> better ways. But also, you know, seclusion. What I describe, to be honest, is seclusion. Yeah, where children are put by mm. themselves in a room because they have not behaved appropriately. Mm. I'm, you know, I'm absolutely horrified mm. what is actually happening mm. in some of our secondary schools. Rather than being pro what I see as being proactive um, school that my children go to, if the children haven't behaved in whatever way is meant to be appropriate, the whole emphasis is they stay in education mm. and um, it, there's various things, it might be that they're put on report, it has to be signed, each teacher, you know, it may be that they're on a one-to-one -one and they go to each class, and the whole emphasis is that, that they maintain their friendship groups, they maintain their education, because sometimes the reward is that mm -hmm. they get turfed out of school, yeah. that's <laughs> what they actually <coughs> wanted, yeah. and all you do is reward them that behaviour. and potentially that person's chances in the future. Mm -hmm. So I'd, I'd say right. absolutely yeah. schools, yeah. colleges, yeah. Thanks for that, Sam. Thanks for that. Okay, um, can I on your behalf thank the steering group members for their contribution?